Hey, welcome to Gracie Schwartzall. I'm here with Erkan Mete, my assistant, and today I'm going to cover uh, I'm going to cover a technique, but I want to use it to explain an idea that's exceptionally important and that uh, is uh, not taught at a lot of schools, or I don't think um, reinforced at a lot of schools, and that is, what is the best technique? There is no best technique. What's the best armbar? There is no best armbar. Right? What's the best takedown? It all depends, right? Yeah. So, this is something that I see all the time, is people will teach one technique, maybe that works very well in a sport competition setting, and say that's the best technique, okay? But that technique may be very inappropriate in a different setting, right? Or they'll say, you know, well, wrestling has the best takedown, so let's use this wrestling takedown, because um, that'll be the best. Maybe it works very well in a sport jiu-jitsu setting, maybe it works very well in MMA, but it does not work well in the street, okay? so. You need to learn the techniques, but then you need to understand how, what the weaknesses or strength they might have, but specifically the weaknesses they have once the restrictions, the setting, and the arena of combat change. Okay, so you might do a particular technique a certain way, let's say in judo, right, because it has certain rule sets that you might not apply in a jiu-jitsu setting or in a wrestling setting. Okay, uh, obviously, you know, in jiu-jitsu is fine to get on my back. I wouldn't do that in judo, I wouldn't do that in wrestling. It's a kind of a macro idea of that. All right, so I want to explain how I don't want you guys getting caught in that trap of thinking, okay, well, this is the best example of this, even if it's been proven, right? Very high successful, proven in one arena of combat, it falls apart in another. Okay, and so I'm going to use an example of this, and I'm going to explain now. Also, let me back up for just a second. When you cross train into another style, do wrestling, you do judo, you do whatever it is, I really want to emphasize, don't train wrestling for BJJ. Train wrestling for wrestling. Learn it as a cohesive art, develop it as a cohesive art, learn it under its own rules, master that. Um, I find that when you try to take it too early and just modify it for jujitsu, you end up with just kind of a, a bastard child of the two that isn't really good at anything. So, you know, first master it under its own terms. Um, one of my old instructors said, you know, if you go to the first grade four times, you're not a fourth grader. Okay, so, you know, learn how to do everything exactly, you know, if, if in judo I'm rolling, you know, and I get taken down, I'm gonna go to my belly. I'm gonna fight from the turtle position. Okay, where I might not do that in, in a jiu-jitsu setting or an MMA setting or something like that. Um, and once you know the holistic system and you're pretty confident in that, you can start to adjust, but then you've really got to start to look at why you're doing things um, and adjust them in different settings. Okay, so the example I'm going to give is defending a single leg and what his goals are maybe in a wrestling setting, but where the danger might come in into a jiu-jitsu setting. Okay, so in a single leg here, Let's go and just drop on the ground. He's got my leg. Right now he's got the head on the inside, okay? Um, what he wants to do is, he wants, obviously he wants to put me down, okay? So, one of my main counters, go ahead and get the leg. Go ahead and get the leg. Is, I do not want to be at this angle to him. So I'm going to stuff his head, bring my body, my spine, and alignment with his, now hold on to my leg. Now it's harder for him to hold on to my leg. Okay, so what I want to do is bring us back in alignment. I do not want him cutting the corner on me. So he gets that single leg. First thing I want to do is his head is up. Is I want to stuff it. And then I want to square back up, keep the leg. I want to square back up and then start working my body away. Okay? So what he wants to do, obviously, you know, all fighting is very easy. If I know what he wants to do, I need to stop him doing it. So what he wants to do to stop that happening is he wants to circle around to the side. Now, if he keeps his elbow up, come up, like this, I can keep circling this way. So turn this way just a little bit. So what he wants to do is get far enough around that he can drop his elbow on the ground. This is going to block my shin and my foot from coming this way so I can no longer square up with him. Now he's going to keep working around to the side and he can start to bring me down. Okay? Absolutely great for wrestling. 
Right, so he's trying to drop that elbow on the inside of my leg, block my ability to square my body back up with him. Now, if you train wrestling, if a wrestling coach comes to your jiu-jitsu school and teaches you that, that'll be great. Here's the problem. Let's go on this side, you head down this side. Right? And here he catches the leg and he circles around. Let's try this way a little bit more. And he drops his elbow inside. Well, I can no longer square up. But look, I'm going to back step and catch his elbow. I'm locking his elbow in. Here, I'm going to roll over my shoulder. My leg kicks straight. I come up, control the hip, break him down, and I go. Okay? So, one more time. He gets that leg. He gets the elbow inside. I no longer strip. I step back, catch the elbow. Roll over my shoulder. As I do, this leg does not kick down. It kicks straight. I switch. Let me turn this way. I have the elbow, not the wrist. Switch, come up, walk my body out, break him down, head on this side. Okay, so this is where the concept comes, right? I want to square the circle. I still want to cut the corner to stop him squaring up and flattening me out. Okay, but I don't want to give him the one punt. So how do I do that? So when I catch the single here, right, close head like Right, again, he wants to drive his hips over me and then sprawl straight back. Okay? The idea of not letting his foot go, because if his foot, where his foot goes, his hips goes. If I turn his foot this way, his hip goes this way. So it turns that way, his hip goes that way. So I need to stop the hip rotation. So when I go here, what I like to do is I'm going to switch my hands, control, I grab the tendon on the inside of his uh, knee, my elbow's on the ground, my other hand I slide back to an angle. So I'm controlling the ankle, controlling here. So now, he tries to square up with me, he can't. Okay? He tries to do an omoplata, he's not over my elbow. Now, even if he gets the wizard here, that's okay. I can still work here. Okay. Here. So, this is just one technique, but I just want to show that idea of understand why something is done a certain way under a certain rule set, but don't assume that that way applies to all rule sets. That's probably one of the greatest mistakes, I think, when people get into a particular martial art, they start viewing it only through the lens of that martial art, and they think, oh, it works very well. Stand up. Right? He throws a vertical fist straight punch at me. Yeah, poxa works very good. He throws more of a flat fist, a little bit, it's a lot harder to do the poxa. Okay? So I have to adjust, right? I have to understand that this works great if he's fighting under that exact rule set. Great block. Not necessarily a great block if somebody's throwing a different kind of punch under a different rule set. Okay. Um, you know, this grip is great under the judo rule set, but if we can punch, I don't want to stand at this range. So that's just a, as you train and you learn techniques and somebody says, this is the best way to do this, you know, within its own rule set, learn it, okay? But when you change rule sets, re-examine, um, learn why something is being done, but then re-examine what it, its weaknesses under the new rule set, under the new combative situation might be. And uh, thanks again, Eric.